Welcome to Talent X, the Talent Experience podcast featuring authentic conversations on the future of work, empowering you to better understand and deliver a best in class, future proofed career experience. For more insightful conversations, visit talentxpodcast.com. We hope you enjoy this episode of the Talent X podcast. Hey all, it's Rhonda Taylor here with Talent X, another episode of talking about the talent experience. And, uh, you know, today's another challenge. We keep putting our one foot in front of the other. And with us today, we have Wendy Daly. And Wendy is an HR professional who I have known for quite a while. Um, I think most of you would probably know her as the co-host of HR Social Hour. So Wendy, welcome. Thank you, Rhonda. I'm excited to be here. This is, so this is it, exciting. I know. I know. Wendy, give us a little bit more background on yourself. Oh, so we'll do the short version since this is a short podcast. Um, <laughs> I have been in uh, talent acquisition for uh, right around 20 years um, in a wide variety of um, industries and all across the U.S. and um, in a number of different states. I am now um, a talent acquisition strategist for a large healthcare organization, um, and we are um, uh, we are headquartered in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which is where I live with my family. We've been back in South Dakota for about uh, seven years now. Hey, Wendy, let's talk about uh, what are your pronouns? Sure. So uh, my pronouns are um, she, her, and hers. And then I, um, I always like to share how I identify as well, because I think it's important to know people to know how I see the world and how I think the world sees me. So um, I am white, straight, um, side gender, uh, Christian, and uh, non-disabled. Right, right. And I asked you earlier about the non-disabled. That's, that's the, the description side of it yeah. all. So... And why, you know, you, you mentioned that you're comfortable with that, with, um, you know, providing that, that insight, because so many times people aren't comfortable asking you the, those questions. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, we're not supposed to ask, <laughs> you I know? know, I know we're you're, you're right. Rude. You're right. Excuse me. Excuse me. You're not supposed to ask, but we <laughs> tell, but we tell why. Well, you know, to, to make people comfortable to ask. I think that's that's the main thing, and and it's to we've talked so long in um, uh, in the working world, or not so long, but lately the you know the big thing is bring your authentic self to work, which really isn't true. We don't want your authentic self. We want we <laughs> we want you to be, but if we're gonna bring our authentic self to work, we need to know how we 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 need to be able to share with people how we want you to see us. And, and how I want to be seen by by people, and so by sharing um, how I identify, sharing my pronouns. If I share it, it makes it comfortable for other people to share it. Um, and then you're, there's no question, you know, because uh, like, like we were just you know joking about you know you're not supposed to ask. It's rude to ask somebody what their pronouns are, and we actually should get more comfortable with asking those questions so that we don't misidentify somebody in, in unintentionally. Or we don't Absolutely. call Absolutely. You know, we, we that how much worse is that than you know not not being rude? It's you know, it's right up there with continuing to mispronounce somebody's name. Um, misidentifying them is is it's it, that's more rude <laughs> in, in yes. my mind. And so we need to be comfortable sharing it and asking those questions from from the very beginning. And and it, it's like seeing um it's like how many times have you seen been in a, a parking lot and you've seen a car pull in with a handicapped sticker and they walk into the store and they walk into the store quite normal and you're saying what's going on here <laughs> you know yeah. and but like if all of a sudden you had an insight that that person has a heart condition or it's somebody like me that once I carry carry 10 pounds it puts a strain on my spinal system that I need, I'm okay walking into the store. I'm just not okay walking out of the store. Right. We just, we don't know. And we've, we've, for so many years, we've just made assumptions 
Um, and for some reason we've gone to, we are assuming ill intent with people and we need to start, we need to switch that up and we need to be okay asking and we need to start assuming good intent um, when, um, when people are, you know, using a handicapped parking spot and they may not look, a, they might not look like they need to. Um, we don't know, we don't know what's going on inside someone else. And so we need to stop making those assumptions. Oh, ex exactly, exactly. And I think, you know, and, and where this discussion is going and is both of us have a very strong marketing background. Um, <laughs> I also, you know, I think we're, we're marketers at, at heart. Um, we're going to talk about personal brand sure. because that's, that's almost where you start off with what are your pronouns, you know, yeah. what are, what is, what's the information we need to know about you? Well, in today's world, it, we all have a brand and we, we, some of us would say, no, I don't have a brand, but we do. Because, whether, whether you want to or not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Whether you want it or not. Yeah. And, and like, you know, like let, let's, let's take a look at, at, you know, you know, what are, what are some of the, you know, things that people put in, you know, do it to create a personal brand. You know, I think beyond creating one, um, because you've got one, so it's it's more around managing who you are, and I think that really kind of goes back to like it, it, into recruitment and talent acquisition because you have your resume, which tells people about you, tells you tells them what you want to know about them. Um, when you fill out an application, you tell the the employer what you want to know what what you want them to know about you, and so you can go back to what are you putting in your resume, what are you putting out on on your LinkedIn profile. Um, and what does that say about who you are as um, as a potential employee, a potential connection, um, and and what do you bring to uh, what do you bring to the equation? Um, so you know we we don't have to think about it as I think some people think brand and they go oh so much work and I've got to do all this stuff and you know, do I need a logo? Do I need you know <laughs> all of these different things when you think about branding? And it's really just telling your story and in a way that is true to who you are and using your own voice. Um, I, I love, I, I, so many people don't like social media. I love social media because people are able to be themselves or the brand that they want to be out there. And you get to know who's authentic with their brand and, yeah. and who has a persona, who has, you know, here's, here's this other. And, and it's something on, um, on my podcast, um, Ann Tompkinson and I have talked about a couple of times too, because we'll talk about, you know, Serena Williams or, or Beyonce come up in conversation. And, and it's like, we need to be sure when we talk about those people, that is a persona that they're putting out. We don't know them in person. We don't know who they really are at home, but we know who they're, what the brand they are, what brand they're putting out there and, and who we would inter be interacting with if we got to, you know, oh, got to meet Serena Williams. <laughs> Exactly. I love Serena Williams because she said it will be a cold day in hell when my daughter's paid less than the, than the man she's working beside. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that mentality. And the daughter is what, one year old? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> but, you know, and I think we, we, you, you touched on it a bit was is social media. You know, you have the, um, you know, you have your LinkedIn profile and it's very structured and it's, and it's almost like sterile, um, like the resume. Uh, yeah. If I really want to know a person, I start diving into their social media activity. I'd start taking a look at articles that they have authored because mm -hmm. as you said earlier, it's, your it's their authentic self yeah you do you check social media at all um i i will i i'll usually look for someone on twitter first <laughs> you know um and, and that's i mean that's that's my um that, that's my social you're media. dating yourself you're dating yourself I, apparently so um <laughs> my kids are on you know tiktok and stuff but um no but i think you know too i think it's I'll, I'll go out to look for people and um, and people I've connected with either on LinkedIn or, or Twitter. That's usually where I'm connecting with with strangers. Um, but and you can tell who 
who's real and who's not because there are people who have different personas based on what social media they're on. And oh my God, would that be exhausting? Um, <laughs> like, I who, know. Who am I? Where am I? Um, so, you know, for people I want to connect with and people that, you know, maybe we want to invite to be a part of the, the Twitter chats or, or the, the larger HR community, making sure that we know who they are and, and who we're inviting in. Um, you know, we, I like to say we're very open, we're very welcoming, but we're also very particular. Um, I'm never going to stop somebody from coming in, but I might not extend you an invitation be, based on what you've been sharing. Um, if, it, if it doesn't coincide, if you're not showing who you really are, if you're, you know, saying one thing and sharing different articles that say something completely different, um, you know, we're going to wonder who, who's, who are we really inviting into, into the fold. Um, and not that I would, wouldn't want someone in with differing opinions. Um, that's not the thing because, you know, we definitely want that. We want to have that discussion and that's how we grow and learn new things. But um, if you don't know what your opinion is and you're saying, you know, saying one thing or sharing different things, um, uh, I, I might wonder who, who I'm actually hanging out with here. <laughs> Do you think, um, I, and like, I'm not an advocate, like you're seeing some of these young ones of today, they have their own, they have their own website. You know, they're going out and getting their domain and they have their website. Um, you know, as an HR pro, pro, you don't have to go that direction. You, it's important for you to have a brand, but you know, that's, that's going a little overboard. Um, I recommend- Depending on what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, that's right. If you're you're in graphics or marketing uh, yeah. at a very high level, yeah, you're right. It, absolutely, you're you're right there. Um, but are there social me media channels that? Yeah, I know you said link. Uh, you, you said Twitter. <laughs> Which, oh my gosh, I I, I had, you know what? I, I am a big Twitter fan too, but yeah. I also am on TikTok and Instagram, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't dance on it. Don't worry, people. <laughs> you know, they, but what are the, the, the social media channels that employers sort of take a boo at um, when they're checking people out? You know, um, obviously, they go, I know they go to LinkedIn. Um, yeah. There are probably some that just do the, the Google search and, and search for somebody's name. Um, which is why I'm kind of glad I, I have a, not a, a totally unique name. <laughs> it can be a little bit hard to find me. Um, but I think, you know, there's some, every employer is going to do it a little bit differently. Um, and from an employer standpoint, you know, one, you want to be consistent in what you're looking at and, and who's doing the looking. Um, I would never recommend having your hiring managers just go out willy nilly looking for people um, because you you don't know what they're going to find and what they're not going to share, <laughs> what they're not going to tell you they found. So you want to be sure that you, you kind of control who's doing the searching. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of, there are a lot of people out there. It's less now, but you know, Oh, be careful what you share. Be careful what you share. Um, I, I'm not going to say that because you want to be authentic to yourself. So you share what you want to share but understand there's consequences to what you share. Um, exactly. You, you, I live in a very, very conservative town um, and m there's very few of the larger companies here in this town that would bring me on in their HR because they just, they don't want any of their HR people on social media at all. I, I was cautioned because I was on, I, I was cautioned once because I was on Twitter and I'm like, did you see something that, does there something I posted that was inappropriate? Cause I'm, gosh, I'm just, you know, racking my brain. No, you, your feed was fine, but you just want to be careful. Okay. Well, I'm a 45 year old woman. I think I'm okay <laughs> with what I'm putting out there. Um, but it, I mean, you do need to understand that whatever you put out there, it is public. Anyone can find it, whether they should or not, they, anyone can find it. So you need to know that you're putting yourself out there. And so and, can, costs, and there could be consequences. And it costs big money to get it to be to get it taken down. Oh yeah. Major just because dollars. You something. Just because you delete something, it's not gone. Somebody screenshot no. it. You know they should. <laughs> Especially exactly. if it's controversial enough that an employer is it, 
is going to say they don't want to hire you or they're going to fire you for it. Um, I don't want to be on the other side of, of the, the table from Kate, someone like Kate Bischoff telling me that I shouldn't have posted that thing on, on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and look, you know, and what you see sometimes uh, with young groups, you know, the, the, the 25, 35 group, you know, they have a great weekend out and there's five cases of beer on the empty cases of beer on the dock, you know, that's a one-time event. Um, yeah. You know, it's great if you take the picture and you make it known that it's a one-time event, but if that's a lifestyle, then be careful, you know. Yeah. Uh, unless you're working for Budweiser. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really, you know, it does, it comes down to where, where you're working and, and that sort of thing. And too, and I think a lot, I think kind of some of that where we're going with with drug screens and that sort of thing is putting the onus on to people to say, are you coming to, when you're coming into the office, are you ready and prepared to work? If you're not, then maybe we should send you home. It's the same, I mean, so yay, South Dakota just legalized mar recreational marijuana. Shocked me that we would do that. But people are like, oh my gosh, what do we do now as employers, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, the same thing you always did. You don't have to allow people to come to work high. You, alcohol is legal and you don't need to allow people to work when they're drunk. So you don't need to allow people to work when they're high. So you need to train your hiring managers to recognize the signs of someone who is impaired because they could be impaired for all sorts of reasons, not just because they smoked marijuana last night or ate a exactly. brownie or whatever. So yeah. it's, it's more, are your employees ready to work and do they understand they need to be ready to work when they come in in the door. So uh, understanding that. So yeah, if you wanna if you wanna fire somebody because they party every night, but if they're if they can come in and work the next day and they're not impaired, you know, what's think about your think about the consequences of, of from an employer standpoint too. What does it say about you for terminating somebody because they of what they did on social media? Now it, there might be a really good reason to do it. I'm not saying that, but <laughs> have your ducks in a row as well. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and sometimes the, your, your personal brand is dynamic. It's always changing. Yeah. And, and, you know, people need to be on top of, you've got to show that, you know, that you're dynamic, that, that things are changing. Um, and I think a great example would be, now we're reskilling and upskilling. Oh, you know, yeah. What would your recommendation be to to individuals and on how to get that message across? Oh golly, you know, one. I guess there's a couple of things I'm thinking here. So, <laughs> one, if you are looking for that opportunity. So, you know, you've been laid off. This is a, honestly, in the United States, this is, and I think Canada too, this is a great time um, to, to be in a, a position where you're gonna switch careers. There's a lot of grant money out there in the US for someone who can't go back to the, to the business you were in before. So if your business closed down because of COVID or, or whatever, there's money out there to help you go back to school and, and create a new career. And so I think part of it is making sure people know that you're open to that so that they can share those opportunities with you. I know of a ton. So, hey, DM me on Twitter and I'll send you, send you links. <laughs> but I think, you know, letting people know that you're open to that and then sharing that good news when you get that opportunity to, to reskill that you're, you're taking your career in, in a new direction. And, you know, I, I, I'd be lying if I had, if I didn't say, you know, there's been time that I've thought about that. I was like, oh, well, do I need to take my career in a different direction? If I do, what are, what are some of the steps that I'm going to take to get there? And, you know, the first thing is, is looking into what, a, what did other people do? Who is someone that I know that switched careers, that, that moved into, that, that reskilled or rebranded themselves and, and did something new? Um, you know, uh, I love Lori Rudiman. She's done that a couple of times with her, with her podcast and, and renamed it. And we're going to go, we, it's gone this route and I've decided we're going to go this other way now. Um, sometimes it's okay to do it abruptly. And sometimes you want to 
step back and think about it and and how do you make that um, how do you make that adjustment and get that word out based on what you're doing now I shouldn't I don't know that she did it abruptly I'm sure she was she thought it through long before she shared anything publicly but helping people to to take that journey with you and you can do that on any social media platform um, to to adjust your brand and change your brand and, and help people see who you um, where you're headed because I mean, I'm not the same person I was five years ago. Um, and even, you know, a year ago, this is, <laughs> we've all aged 50 years in this last year, I think, but it's, it's been a, I think there's a lot of that going on. And so I think one, you need to be open to it. Um, and, and be okay asking for help. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Ask for help. Mm -hmm. Um, and people, whether, whether it's a skill help or mental help, now's the time. There's, as, yeah. as Wendy said, there's so many programs out there. Don't sit back and suffer, no. you know, and question yourself. Ask for help. You know, Wendy, you're in the, you know, talent acquisition space. Um, we're seeing resumes, you know, when I was young, a resume was a total reflection of my personal brand. Mm -hmm. is it is it now um yeah it should be it should be okay it should be it should be a reflection of, of your personal brand it should bring you know all all of those different pieces and parts of yourself together um to to share it in one short <laughs> short um <clears throat> page. Uh, I'm not going to say it doesn't have to be one page, but it, it should be concise and to the point of of who you are, because there are other places to to share the details. There are other places to um, share some of those longer, uh, more in depth. And I think that's the beauty of how, of LinkedIn is that you can get into more depth and you can share. Yeah, here's here's a de details of a project I did. Here's an article that I wrote that you don't necessarily want to have on a resume, um, unless you're doing the CV, which is you know the 27 pages of everything you've ever done <laughs> professionally. Yeah. But I think the more concise you can be in that brand, that's your short brand, and then send them to LinkedIn, send send them to a blog, send them to your to a web page if you have a web page. Send them to these places where you have and you're keeping track of those things so that you can continually, you can shape your resume to, um, to where you want to go. Right, right. And Wendy, we could go on all day. We could. <laughs> personal brand. And it's so important. Um, it's something that sort of um, just evolved through time. And like yeah. all of a sudden, just one day, we all woke up and realized that we had an individual personal brand. And now it's called a reputation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it used to be called a reputation, <laughs> but but now you um, but now we have all kinds of other other means and ways of getting our messaging out. And Gen Z, they're they're doing it so many other innovative ways than than the ways it, that we. It's so much fun to watch what they're doing and, and how they're putting it out there. And, and I think, you know, um, we we can't be fuddy duddy about it. <laughs> I exactly exactly you know as we're as we're getting ready to wrap up here we always ask our guests and I want to thank you so much for being a guest um you know you really enjoy what you're doing you you're passionate about you know the HR social hour you're passionate about your job you always have a smile on your face <laughs> what how does Wendy do it um lots of alcohol no um <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's taken me a long time to find joy in what I'm doing. Um, and I, I don't believe the phrase of, you know, do something that you love and you'll never work a day in your life. I, I don't believe that phrase. Um, but I believe that you can find some joy in what you're doing. Um, and, and, and you, you can't be afraid to just kind of step out and say, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and, you know, the, the podcast and stuff kind of started because I wasn't happy in my, my day job. Um, and it was something to, to give a, give a little new life to, um, me and human resources. And I, I've been able with, 
John and I working together on that and the chat and HR Wonder Woman and everything else has, has just been able to give me that, um, bring some meaning in, into, um, into the day-to-day -day work. And it's been able to, I've been able to flood it over into my day-to-day. -day. I'm starting a, an internal podcast. And so I've been able to, you know, get, make that journey. And so it's, you know, it's never too, it's never too late to, to find that joy. I, I, and, you know, our generation and is now just finding that joy. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that the future generations will enjoy their work. They will I, work because they enjoy it. Because there will they have be more so choices. Many options. That's right. Yeah. And you know what? Longevity is not going to be an issue for them. They may go, no. they may work there for a couple of months or a couple of years and move on, you know? Yeah, but I don't. It's, it's a different life. For, it, it, it will be a different life for them. But for at sure. Telenex, we're all about, you know, um, people enjoying what they're doing. And, and we, you, you definitely do enjoy it. <laughs> I do. We, I, you know, people, I have to share with you. I just burst out laughing as we start it because Wendy does this to me too. She's such an incredible, vibracious character. And I, I love speaking with her because she always makes it so enjoyable. So Wendy, I thank you for being a guest on Telenex. Oh, thank you, Rhonda. Thanks for having me. It's been great. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Talent X podcast. For more talent experience and future of work conversations, visit talentxpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at Talent X Podcast. Or join the conversation with hashtag Talent X Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Talent X, the talent experience podcast, was brought to you by the fabulous Fuelies at Fuel 50. Sorry, I just got it. <laughs>